Yo, what is going on dudes? Hopefully everyone is doing okay. So in this video, we are going to talk about my MotoVlog setup. From my helmet to the camera I use, the microphone, adapter, everything that's involved. I'm also going to talk about this. Because when you use the adapter with the GoPro, it is no longer waterproof. Big problem. But I've got a nice little fix that keeps everything watertight and safe. So we'll start off with the most important thing, which is of course your lid, your helmet. We use a Nolan N87. Really good helmet. I mean, they're fairly budget friendly and they've got lots of different designs. Really comfortable. I really like it. Really nice helmet. So our colour scheme is the black and yellow. I think it looks pretty cool. I mean, it is quite fluorescent, especially when you've got the light on it and getting darker at night. So it is quite easy to spot when you're out in the road. So that definitely helps. Comes with the wind protection, which is handy for having the microphone as well. Cuts out a bit of that wind noise. The interior's nice and comfortable. It can, of course, be removed and washed as needed. Comes with the quick release chin strap as well. So it's nice and quick, nice and easy to get on and off so you're not messing about with D-ring straps and things like that. So that's a nice little touch. The visor also comes with the quick release, which is nice and handy. It's really easy to change it over if it needs to be replaced. Also has the pin locks on it so you can put your pin lock visor in to stop your visor steaming up when you're out in the road. So that's pretty much it on the helmet. Really good helmet, worth every penny. I can definitely recommend Nolan, or more specifically, the Nolan N87. Oh, that's good. So for the mount on the front of my helmet, I used a stuff called Sugru. It's like a moldable glue kind of stuff, and it comes in a sealed packet. And once you open it up and the air gets into it, you have like 30 minutes or whatever before it starts to cure and set. So it's more than enough time for you to kind of make a wee mold or whatever it is you're going to be putting it on your helmet. So I've got mine on the front just there. So it kind of took me a while to kind of figure out where I was wanting it. I didn't want it up here or up here. I just, I don't know, it just felt weird. It felt being on the front of the helmet was a more natural position for the camera. So but I eventually managed to get it on there. I didn't want to obviously interfere with that. And even once the camera's on, you can still open and close that, no problem. So you can see it going round the bottom of the mount. I mean, it's not the tidiest job in the world. It's definitely not the tidiest job, but it is absolutely solid. I mean, once it's on there, it will not come off. I mean, you can cut it off and stuff like that, but that is more than strong enough to hold my camera all day long. So the camera I use is a GoPro Hero 7 Black, and this is the the mount that I have. I didn't really want too many little arms and stuff, so I tried to get away with using as little links as possible. These things are quite annoying. They are quite annoying. I mean, for this one, obviously, yeah, so you can adjust it and whatever, but for all the other ones, I basically just went to B&Q and got the same size threaded Allen bolts and just replaced them. So, so they don't need to get adjusted once they're in place. It's only the angle, the up and down angle. So they just get tightened up and it just looks a lot neater. You know, so you don't have these things sticking out everywhere. You know, it's just a bit, just a bit neater. It looks a bit better. And plus, you know, when you need to make any adjustments, you're only, you know, adjusting the one you're not fiddling about. So that's it. Nice and simple. Clip it in at the front of the mount. You've got a little rubber kind of grommet thing in the middle just to stop it vibrating about. You don't really need it. Certainly, I don't think you need it. Not with this setup because it doesn't move anyway, but that's just a little bit of added security. And then it's just a case of finding what kind of angle you want. For mine, it's just pretty much rest it against the helmet, tighten it up, and that's the view that I use, and it's ideal. I might need to change it about once we pass our mod too, because we'll be in the bigger bike, obviously. But I mean, I've got plenty of attachments and things that if we need to put it out a wee bit further, it's not gonna be an issue. So that's pretty much the camera setup. Nice and easy, nice and simple to set up. No wind resistance. I mean, you don't feel like there's anything on your helmet. So front of the helmet for me is definitely the best place for my camera. So the camera itself is a GoPro Hero 7 Black. It is really good quality, really good quality. It can record up to 4K at 30 frames, I think. Or is it 60? I can't remember. I have recorded in 1440. I also got the little screen protectors to go in the front. They're like a couple of bucks off of Amazon and stuff. And it's just that added security, just in case anything stones or that ping up while you're up on the road. It's just, it's like the screen protectors you get on a phone. It's the same thing. Pop it on, you know, get all the bubbles and that out of it, and it's good to go. The only thing about it is that, oh my god, the clips can be quite hard to get undone. But that's a good thing, at least you know it's not going to fall out. But they're nice little compact cameras. The only thing about it 
is I use the GoPro adapter. So when you use a GoPro adapter, you have to remove this little side door. So to remove it, it's easy enough. You just open it up and basically pull it back and it pops right off. And you need that because the GoPro adapter goes into the USB at the side. But the problem with that is once that door has been removed, your GoPro is essentially no longer waterproof. So that can be a big issue if you're out riding about in the rain. So that's basically what you've got when you're out on the road. You've got that, you've got that big gap there. So you've got to try and fill that to make sure that nothing's gonna get in. Whether anything would get into the USB because it's plugged in or not, I don't know. It's just not worth the chance, is it? Plus you've got to think about dirt and dust and grit that comes up from the road. You don't really want that getting in there either, do you? So I had a wee look about online, done a bit of research, and I found a few answers that potentially might have worked. And one of them was to use Gorilla duct tape, you know, like the really, really sticky stuff, the black duct tape, to basically put it on and put it around your GoPro a little bit. And that kind of worked, but the problem was, if you got any dirt or grit, the tape just stopped sticking, and then essentially it wasn't waterproof. So that might be all right for a temporary fix if you're needing a quick fix, but it's definitely not something that you can use on a permanent basis. Not that I found anyway. But what I did find, I found a forum on Reddit talking about this exact problem. And someone came up with this genius idea. I can't remember who it was. If I can find the post again, I'll link it down below. But basically, they were using moldable earplugs. So they're basically earplugs. It's like the same kind of stuff as Suguru, but it doesn't set. You know, like if you leave it out, you can leave it out for weeks and it won't set, it'll still be soft and sticky. And you basically mold it into the shape of your ear. And then when you wake up, you take them out, wash them, whatever, put them back in the box and they can be reused time and time again. So this guy came up with the idea for waterproofing his GoPro. So I thought, let's get some and let's try it. So this is them here. The ones I use are called Bio Ears. Bio Ears, I got these on Amazon for like, I think it was like six pounds, I think, something like that, and you get 12 pieces. And I'm, I've only used a piece and a half for my whole setup, and I'm still in that same piece and a half, and I've had this for probably six weeks. So it definitely serves a purpose, and for the price, I mean six bucks, this will last. If you get a year out of it, it's not bad, is it? So that's the stuff that it comes in like little, kind of flat balls like that but this is the piece that I've been using you don't have to use it all you can break bits off like that so you can kind of just work it in your fingers to soften it up a wee bit and obviously when you're out on the road with it it might get dirty and covered in grit and stuff but it's better at going on that than into your GoPro but if it does you give it a wash leave it out to dry and it's good to go again so I'll get on to how I use that in a second what I'll do is I'll pop my camera on the front and I'll show you how I waterproof it where would the world be without tea, man? Where would it be without tea? So the GoPro is attached. There it's there. You can see the door is open. So that's a big gap, isn't it? That is a big scary gap that you need to get sorted out. You don't want to be in the, out in the road with that thing open, do you? Especially on a wet day. So on the side of my helmet here, I've got a little piece of Velcro for my adapter. Adapter goes on the side. I've also got this stuff on the back of my adapter. I'll show you that in a second. So that's it plugged in. So that's basically what my setup, my audio setup looks like. So you can see there that that has to get taken care of, doesn't it? First thing I do is just break off a small amount. You don't need a lot, just maybe the size of a pea, maybe a little bit more, and then just kind of flatten it out, and roll it into a, a wee worm, like what you used to do when you were a kid with plasticine. <laughs> so like that sort of idea, all right? Just something like that. Then what I do is at the bottom of the adapter here, I basically wrap it around that part so it looks something like that okay so you've just kind of wrapped it around the back of the adapter just where the adapter's on the edge of the case so you can kind of squeeze it down push it down just to create that nice seal and once it's there and it's flattened down nothing's getting in there absolutely nothing's getting in there and what i like to do is just with these edges here i just like to flatten them because you can use them to attach the other piece onto this so that it's all sticking together to make a nice seal. So then take another bit, you can use as much or as little as you want. I like to kind of use probably two or three times the size of the other bit and then you don't have to roll it. What you want to do is you just kind of want to flatten it out, just kind of make it nice and thin. Stretch it out a bit because we have got quite a big area to cover, haven't we? 
So what I like to try and do is try and make a top straight part because that's going to be going against the adapter and we're going to be moulding it around the adapter a wee bit. So as long as you've not made any breaks in it when tearing it and as long as it's still one full piece, it's still going to be waterproof. So that's kind of the shape that, you're, that I like to use, that kind of thickness. You don't have to worry about doing this every single time you use it because once it's on, all you have to do is peel it off, take your GoPro off, put it in the box just like that and then you can put it back on. Obviously if it gets dirty or anything you have to give it a wee wash, roll it about, clean it, but it only takes a few seconds to kind of stretch it out and get into shape again. So perfect. So basically what you want to do is just kind of want to place it on like that. And once it's placed on it's just a case of kind of working it around, you know, just kind of pressing it around. And like these little tabby bits that are left here, these little tabs, just squeeze them together so they make a nice seal so that's connected and then just make sure that it's nice and flat and that it's covering the whole open area of the GoPro case. So that's basically what it looks like. So it's got a nice seal all around it and like I said with this stuff it's not permanent so once you go to take your GoPro off all you have to do is you can just peel it and it just comes straight off. And then that's just pop that in the box because the shape is sort of maintained the imprint of the case is still there so it's just a case of putting the bit on the back again popping it back on and then just redoing the seal and then you're good to go so this stuff is absolutely amazing this one is called bio ears there's loads of different brands and kinds out in the market i got these on amazon i will leave a link down below to these ones these were just the most reviewed ones that's why i got them and I didn't see anything in the reviews about motorcycle helmets. <laughs> it was all people traveling and stuff. But for what I want them to do, best money I've ever spent when it comes to a motor vlogging helmet. I've been out in the rain countless times with this and never once had an issue. So it definitely works. It definitely does work. So as for the microphone, okay, we did have a problem with the microphone. We put up a video a few weeks ago about a really weird audio problem we were having. It was popping and cracking and stuff. Because essentially what I was doing when I first started doing my motor vlogging, I had a microphone in my helmet going into my jacket, into my phone, and my phone was recording my audio. And that was working fine. It was just annoying. You know, every time you're taking your helmet off to go and get fuel or go into a shop or something, you know, it was cables were getting tugged, things were getting unplugged, you'd have to stop and save the recording, restart it, resync again, you know, do your little clicks and whatever. So that's why I thought, let's get ourselves the adapter. But I probably should have done a wee bit of research first because I didn't know that there were a lot of problems with the adapter because I'm not the only one that has problems. I've seen countless threads online about people complaining about them. But once I got it sorted, really good, it works brilliant. So the problem I was having is it was cracking, it was popping, and it would be intermittent. It wouldn't be, you know, it would happen at a set time. At first, I thought it was something to do with speed. You know, you go, you go over a certain speed and the wind would be hitting the mic and that would maybe cause the mic to do something and it was popping and crackling or whatever. No, it just started doing it at intermittent times. I tried loads of different mics. Thankfully, the Laviar mics that you get, they're only like five bucks. They're not expensive. But the problem is, like the bio ears there's loads and loads of different companies and brands out there and i bought probably about four different brands but when you get the microphones they all look exactly the bloody same so i think i just bought the four the same mic four times you know so <laughs> be careful of that if you're going to be looking for laviar mics if you're looking for a different mic to try and solve a problem make sure it's not the same microphone just under a different brand name so what worked for me for the audio glitch, I'll leave a wee card up here, you can go and check it out if you want to. It was to do with the actual jacks on the end of the microphone. You get different jacks, they have like black strips in them. And it's to do with, you know, stereo, mono, all that sort of thing. But basically we tried the three strip, the two strip, and the only one that worked for us was the one strip microphone. I'll show you what I mean. So this jack here from my microphone, you can see it's just, I think that, is it TS? I'm sure it's TS. That is just has the one black strip. Come on camera, pick it up. It just has the one black strip on it. So that's the one that worked for me. The only problem with that is, it doesn't happen all the time, which is weird, it's only sometimes. It'll only record in mono. It won't record in stereo. So it only comes out in one ear. You only hear it in one ear when you're playing it back. So what I did, is a setting on this where you can output the audio onto a separate file. It's called raw audio or something like that. 
and that basically gives you a separate audio file. You can put it into Audacity, which is a free software, convert it into stereo, and it's the same. And then you can do a little bit of post-production if you want, you know, clean up the audio, add some treble or bass or some compression or whatever, you know, just to try and tidy it up a wee bit. And that's what worked for me. And it's still working. But the microphone I've got, it's actually a Sony microphone. I bought it from the shop in the UK called Halfords. I bought it from Halfords. It was like $9.99 or something like that. I bought it last year, forgot all about it. Thankfully, I found it in my kitchen, tried it, and it worked. So I'll leave a link. You can get it on Amazon if you're needing a microphone that might help you. Go and try it. I don't think the quality is quite as good as the other Laviar mics I was trying. But once you do a little bit of post-production stuff, it sounds fine. So the microphone itself, it's just attached there, there it is. It's got the the dead cat filter on it because it's like a ball of cat fluff or something. So it's basically in there and I've got the cable running in behind my cheek pad and I've got a load of excess cable kind of tucked up on the inside of the helmet up here, taped up here. So there's just one little cable that comes right down. So that's when this comes into play, the bio ears moldable stuff. Basically it's molded to the shape of that, so that stays on there all the time, except if I need to use that, I'll just create another little kind of mould for it. But you pop it in, just give it a wee squeeze to make sure that it's all nice and watertight, and then you're good to go. And there's not really, there's no massive cables, you know, hanging about or anything. You could tuck that up there a wee bit, I suppose, if you wanted, but you don't notice it when you're out on the bike. So that's pretty much it, that is it. So everything's been waterproofed, Everything works fine, everything sounds a lot better. So it took me a wee while to kind of get it sorted out, but I'm happy with that. Like I said, I might need to change this a bit once I pass my Mod 2, because obviously we're going to be in a different bike, bigger bike, different riding position. So that might have to be adjusted. I don't know how yet, but the camera will be staying on the front. We might just have to add another little linkage here or something. But we'll sort that when it comes to it. So yeah, so I'm happy with it. I like it. And you can take your helmet on and off at the fuel station at shops or whatever and there's nothing gets caught up it just works so nice it's such a nice setup and that's it when it's on when it's on it's fine i mean you can kind of feel this wee fluffy bit it's maybe because i've got a beard as well they're just kind of having a wee party in there or whatever i don't know this occasionally wiggles about a wee bit but it's quite hard to come off so it won't come off nothing getting caught no cables etc it's nice simple sturdy setup that's the only bad thing about having a beard. When you take your helmet off, your beard goes poof like that, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, dudes, I thought I'd just give you guys a look at the setup that I have, the things that I use. If it helped you in any way, you know you're looking to get a motor vlog set up going, maybe this might help you, give you an idea where to mount cameras or adapters or microphones and things like that. And again, the whole waterproofing thing, brilliant idea. If it's something you're needing and you want to think about waterproofing your GoPro, I cannot recommend this stuff enough cheap as chips and it will save your camera trust me <laughs> so we'll be back with another video soon guys we're going to be working on some more mod 2 stuff just to make sure that we've got everything ironed out and everything's up to par and ready for test day whenever that may be we're still not totally sure yet because of the whole covid19 situation we're just really waiting on confirmation for us to go ahead and rebook it so fingers crossed dudes we're gonna have a test date soon but if you guys enjoyed this give it a thumbs up guys i really do appreciate every single one of your likes and of course if you want to see all my uploads click on that subscribe button and hit the bell while you're there you'll get notified whenever i upload a video but until next time guys take it easy